Chapter 3 Our Three Inner Selves by Jill Edwards Stepping into the Magic Sally was giving herself a hard time. She frowned at me and shook her head crossly. I am so annoyed with myself. I know what I want, or at least I think I do. I want a successful career in journalism. I'm bright, creative, and hardworking, and I get along very well with people. It should be straightforward, but every time I get an exciting commission, I just mess it up. Either I become ill or delete it from my computer just before the deadlines. Or I deliver a shabby job of work which I know is not up to my standards. The maddening thing is, I know I'm Sagittarius to myself, but I can't figure out what to do about it. Since we create our own reality, why do we create what we want in life. It's insanity. Why don't we create loving relationships, a wonderful home, fulfilling work, radiant health and prosperity, while living in harmony with the planet and each other? One reason is that we are here to learn how to create our own reality. Learning how to create heaven on earth. The spiritual law is that we always get what we want, but not necessarily what we ask for. In Sally's case, her conscious self longed for a success in her chosen career, but subconsciously she remembered her fear-written mother who used to tell her that people pay a high price for success. Sally never was too sure what the threat was, but she wasn't prepared to risk it. By avoiding success, she simply was protecting herself. The conscious self, what we usually identify as I or me, is just one aspect of ourselves, one aspect of our wholeness, one piece of our personal jigsaw puzzle. To step into the magic, we need to understand each of our inner selves and how they communicate with each other. A model which I find useful from Hawaii and other allied traditions is that everyone has three inner selves, the basic self, the conscious self, and the higher self. These selves roughly correspond to the subconscious, conscious, and higher conscious mind, and also to the mind, body, and spirit. Each self is crucial in our life's journey. The Basic Self The basic self governs the physical body, our emotions, and the subconscious mind. It isn't capable of rational thought. It simply does what it's programmed to do by nature, by childhood messages, and by adult learning. The base itself has three overlapping parts. One, the physical body. The base itself is in charge of our physical body. It sees, hears, touches, tastes, and smells, so that we know what's happening all around us. It also makes sure that we breathe, our blood circulates, our food digests, and our body temperature is maintained and so on, without any conscious effort. If we do want to control these automatic functions, however, we can do so. Most people can learn quite quickly how to change their heartbeat or to raise and lower their body temperatures. 
We can learn how to do this at will, which is how the yogis can survive being naked in the snow for long periods of time. You can learn how to do this by using your imagination. And by using your imagination, by putting much feeling and using your senses in your vivid imaginings with practice, one can have control over their body functions. Two, memory. The base itself also stores our memories, our habits, and learned behavior such as how to drive a car, how to eat a plate of food, and how to walk. It stores every scrap of information that we come across, including totally useless and irrelevant facts, such as the license plate of every car that you saw this week while you went out shopping, or the shoes that you wore on your third birthday. Everything goes into the computer. We may not know how to get it out again, but it is in there somewhere. The basic self also holds our memories from other lifetimes. Three, the inner child. The base itself also includes our inner child, that living self within us, which got stuck somewhere around the age of four or five. The inner child yearns for love and acceptance. It carries all of our fears and inadequacies, our shame and guilt, need for approval, respect for authority and feelings of powerlessness as well as our spontaneity, sense of wonder, and joy of life. The base itself holds our childhood beliefs, messages, and scripts, good and bad, and clings to them unless we find a firm way to give it new instructions. If your inner child was told, you're no good at spelling, Never trust strangers. You will never make friends. You can't have it all. Or life is a struggle. It probably still holds on to those beliefs. More than that, it will strive to confirm those outdated messages. The base itself makes no judgment about whether a belief or a message is positive or negative, helpful or unhelpful. It simply tries to make the world predictable, which means repeating the past. Like a child, the base itself likes safety and security and isn't too fond of change. It needs quite a lot of coaxing before it will abandon an old belief or behavior, as it prefers whatever is old and familiar, even if it is uncomfortable or downright painful. If you are used to being rejected, your basic self will be afraid of being loved and valued. After all, it knows about rejection. It can handle it. Rejection gives it a strange sense of security. Being loved and accepted, on the other hand, will be a leap into the unknown. Very scary. Who knows what might happen? So, it makes sure you are always rejected. All of our emotions arise from the basic self. From sadness to joy, from anger to love, from fear to excitement. If you deny or suppress your basic self, you probably won't feel much at all. You would rarely feel sad, rarely feel angry, 
really feel disturbed, at least on a conscious level. Likewise, you will seldom feel joyful, loving, ecstatic, or bursting with enthusiasm. Without our basic self, we cannot feel fully alive, and will always have a nagging sense that there is something missing in our lives. One reason why some people repeatedly create melodrama is so that they can experience intense emotions, which make them feel alive. Of course, if you do suppress your basic self, it will kindly let you know. It will gently tug at your sleeve, then poke you in the ribs, and if you still ignore it, it will start shouting. If you suppress grief, for example, then your basic self may create a misfortune or a loss in your life in an attempt to bring your grief to the surface. If you suppress anger, your basic self may attract infuriating people or have you in a situation where you have to face injustice. It will force you to deal with your anger. Or it might grab your attention through addictions to alcohol, food, sex, drugs, relationships, or any number of things, which is a common way for the basic self to get its emotional needs met while also asking for help. The myth of willpower. Frances had suddenly put on weight since she started her new job. She enjoyed the work, but always found her desk piled high with projects to complete and felt under pressure a lot to meet the deadlines. When she spoke to her basic self to get her body weight under control, it told her that she had to learn to say no. It was giving her a larger body so that she would feel more powerful. Her basic self was doing its best to help her, while also registering its discontent in an unmistakable way. When Frances plucked up the courage to insist on reasonable deadlines, her employers respected her newfound ability to set her own limits and her weight dropped off again. Whenever we talk of using willpower, for example, to stop smoking or eating less or anything that we've decided to do, we mean declaring war upon our basic self. And it doesn't work. Eventually, the basic self would fight back and feeling quote-unquote out of control, we grope for another cigarette or stuff down another pack of biscuits. What we resist persists. It really isn't productive to fight an enemy in yourself. It may work on the short term, but at the high cost of being alienated from your basic self. The only long-term solution is to cooperate, to befriend your quote-unquote enemy within, and realize it was trying to help you all along. Like a child, the basic self primary needs is to be loved. It needs affection and respect to feel valued and appreciated, and to have his feelings acknowledged. It also needs challenge and stimulation, fun and relaxation, and to have his physical needs met, like nourishing food, adequate rest and sleep, regular exercise, warmth and comfort. 